the Duchess of Sussex and baby Archie have left Cape Town and headed to the next stop on their 10-day royal tour, while Prince Harry has jetted off to Malawi. Meghan, 38, and her four-month-old son were seen at the international airport before their scheduled British Airways flight to Johannesburg. Prince Harry, 35, left Angola today for the third stop during the solo section of the royal tour, where tomorrow he will visit young women at a college and meet Malawi's president Peter Mutharika. Today's flight with Archie also comes a day after Meghan made a private visit to a memorial for South African student Uii Nene Mariana, 19, who was raped and murdered on August 24. The mother and son looked relaxed as they prepared for the short flight earlier today, with Meghan wearing black jeans, a white shirt and a pair of flat pumps. Baby Archie was cradled carefully, with a blanket placed over him, and appeared to be wearing a grey jumper and matching socks paired with navy trousers. New mother Meghan wore her hair tied back as she travelled with her son, who was last seen meeting Archbishop Desmond Tutu in Cape Town on Wednesday. Despite being seen on the airport air bridge today, there are no official engagements planned for the Duchess in Johannesburg until Tuesday. On Tuesday she is set to attend a roundtable discussion with the Association of Commonwealth Universities in Johannesburg. Meghan will meet academics and students to discuss the challenges faced by young women in accessing higher education. The Duchess will then learn about the work of a charity, which receives UK aid for its work to tackle sexual violence in schools, reports The Telegraph. In the evening Meghan and Prince Harry will be reunited, after he flies back from Malawi to join his wife and son. On the final day of the tour the royal pair will be seen together for a visit to a township near Johannesburg to meet with inspiring local youth. They will also meet with Grace Michelle the widow of President Nelson Mandela and will also meet with President Cyril Ramaphosa and his wife Dr Chpomatsk. After this, the Sussexes are expected to depart for London. Today's flight with Archie comes a day after Meghan made a private visit to a memorial for South African student Uii Nene Mariana, 19, who was raped and murdered on August 24. The Duchess of Sussex posted an image on Instagram showing her tying a ribbon to railings at the post office where the student was killed, in an effort to recognize the victims of gender-based violence. Meghan tied a yellow ribbon around the painted veranda of Clarence Post Office and offered condolence to Ms. Mariana's mother to show solidarity with those who have taken a stand against gender-based violence and femicide. Visiting the site of this tragic death and being able to recognize you I I and all women and girls affected by GBV, specifically in South Africa, but also throughout the world, was personally important to the Duchess, the Instagram post read. The crime sparked outrage and once more highlighted the issue of higher rates of violence against women in the country. The social media post also revealed that the Duke and Duchess had been following what had happened from afar and were eager to learn more when they arrived in South Africa. Although Meghan has been making private appearances, her husband Prince Harry has been seen at several official engagements since leaving his wife in Cape Town in both Botswana and Angola. The Duke today met with the President of Angola and learned about pioneering work on the transmission of HIV-AIDS from mothers to their babies which is championed by Angola's First Lady Ana Dias Lorenzo. Uniformed military saluted the Duke of Sussex as he arrived for an audience with leader João Lorenzo at the Presidential Palace in Luanda, Angola, on sixth day of his royal tour of Africa. Harry later visited a hospital to see the HIV project spearheaded by First Lady Lorenzo, who he also met yesterday evening during a reception at the British ambassador's residence. Posting on Instagram account Sussex Royal, the prince said the trip to Angola had been very important to him and he thanked the president for incredibly warm welcome. He wrote, the trip has been very important to the duke, allowing him to see the impacts his mother has had and also highlight issues that are so important to him, especially continuing her work to rid the world of landmines. The prince spent his time in Angola yesterday visiting the place where his late mother Princess Diana launched an anti-landmine campaign, her last major crusade before her untimely death. He retraced her footsteps, 
donning the same protective body armor and visor she did 22 years earlier to detonate a device in a partially cleared field in Diraco, in the southeast of the country. Harry walked into an area that was once an artillery base for anti-government forces who had mined the position in 2000, during the decades-long civil war that tore the country apart. It is reported that the prince also met with President Lorenzo to discuss continuing the campaign to remove landmines from the country. Speaking afterwards the prince said, landmines are an unhealed scar of war. By clearing the landmines we can help this community find peace and with peace comes opportunity. He and his wife, the Duchess of Sussex, also posted a message on their official Instagram page in which they honored his mother's work which helped change the course of history. They added, the Duke is humbled to be visiting a place and a community that was so special to his mother, and to recognize her tireless mission as an advocate for all those she felt needed her voice the most, even if the issue was not universally popular. In Botswana on Thursday Harry hugged a young woman with HIV as he spoke about escaping to Botswana in the wake of his mother's death. In a touching reunion, Harry embraced 20-year-old Lot Lomoyawa, who lost her mother and father to AIDS when she was four years old before testing positive for HIV herself. The pair met in London two years ago and the Duke clearly recognized Lot Lo as he threw his arms around her. Earlier in the day, the prince also gave an impassioned speech backing teenage activist Greta Thunberg as he declared the world was in a state of emergency and losing the battle against climate change. He had arrived by the banks of Botswana's Chobe River in the north of the country to take part in a tree planting project, straining with dozens of people to get a huge sapling into the ground. The Duke then stressed saving the environment was a race against time, adding, led by Greta. The world's children are striking. Harry also spoke about how Bostwana offered him a place to escape to following the death of his mother, Diana, Princess of Wales. He said, 15 years I've been coming here, it's a sense of escapism, a real sense of purpose, I have some of my closest friends here over the years. I came here in 1997 or 1998 straight after my mum died, so it was a nice place to get away from it all. I feel deeply connected to this place and to Africa. Tomorrow the 10-day official tour will continue in Malawi, with Prince Harry expected to arrive in the capital a long way during the morning and during his first day there will visit Nilakul College of Education. He will interact with young women who are supported to attend and complete secondary school with the help of UK aid bursaries through the Campaign for Female Education. After this stop he will meet President Peter Mutharika and in the evening attend a reception hosted by the British High Commissioner. On Monday among the Duke's engagements will be a visit to Lume National Park to pay tribute to Guardsman Matthew Talbot of the Coldstream Guards, who lost his life in May 2019 while on an anti-poaching patrol. The Duke and Duchess of Sussex's Royal Tour Schedule Day 1, 23 September the tour began in a township in Cape Town, South Africa where Prince Harry and Meghan joined children at a workshop that teaches children about their rights and provides self-defense classes. The couple also toured District 6 Museum to learn about the work done to reunite people affected by the apartheid. Day 2, 24 September the Duke and Duchess of Sussex traveled to Mungabizi Beach nearby to learn about Waves for Change's therapy program for those who have been affected by violence. Prince Harry then joined the City of Cape Town Marine Unit to learn about the work done to combat illegal poaching. In the afternoon, Meghan and Harry visited the oldest mosque in the country and finally attend a reception at the British High Commissioner's resident. Day 3, 25 September the Sussexes accompanied by baby Archie met the anti-apartheid Archbishop Desmond Tutu and the Mrs. Tutu at their Legacy Foundation. From here, their Royal Highnesses program split, the Duke will travel to Botswana while the Duchess remains in South Africa. Meghan then remained in South Africa, visiting the Woodstock Exchange that encourages female entrepreneurs. Day 4, 26 September The Duke made a working visit to Botswana first traveling to Chobe Forest Tree Reserve to join schoolchildren to plant trees and raise awareness of the fragility of these vital ecosystems. 
Prince Harry then spent the evening of 26 September at a new Halo Trust demoning camp. Meghan Markle took part in a women in public service breakfast at the High Commission in Cape Town. Day 5, 27 September. The Duke remotely detonated a mine in a field outside Diroko. He saw aspects of the legacy that his mother Princess Diana started in raising awareness for the threat of landmines. He later met members of the local community and victims of landmines. His Royal Highness will give remarks about the importance of continuing demining. Day 6, 28 September. The Duke has attended an audience with Angolan President Lorenzo at the Presidential Palace. He then visited the maternity hospital Lucretia Payne to see the work of a project spearheaded by First Lady Ana Diaz Lorenzo born free to shine which focuses on preventing HIV-AIDS transmission from mothers to babies. Meghan, meanwhile, visited a memorial to a young South African woman whose rape and murder inspired thousands of people to protest the country's high rate of sexual violence. Day 7, 29 September. The Duke is said to arrive in Lilongwe, Malawi in the morning. He will later visit Nilkul College of Education and interact with a network of young women who are supported to attend and complete secondary school with the help of UK aid bursaries through the Campaign for Female Education. The Duke will then attend an audience with the President Peter Mutharika, and in the evening attend a reception hosted by the British High Commissioner. Day 8, 30 September. Prince Harry will fly into Lyon National Park to pay tribute to guardsman Matthew Talbot of the Coldstream Guards, who lost his life in May 2019 while on an anti-poaching patrol. His Royal Highness will witness an anti-poaching demonstration exercise conducted jointly by local rangers and UK military deployed on Operation Corded. To conclude. Meghan will dedicate Liu National Park and the adjoining Mangochi Forest to the Queen's Commonwealth Canopy Project to protect parkland from deforestation and other similar activities. Day 9, 1 October. On the last day of his solo leg of the tour, the Duke will visit the Malwa Heath Centre before heading back to South Africa. The Duchess of Sussex will attend a roundtable discussion with the Association of Commonwealth Universities in Johannesburg. She will also meet academics and students to discuss the challenges faced by young women in accessing higher education. Day 10, 2 October. Have joined back up the previous evening, the Duke and Duchess will visit a township near Johannesburg to meet with inspiring local youth. They will also meet with Grace Michelle, the widow of the late President Nelson Mandela. To close the tour, the royals will attend an audience with President Cyril Ramaphosa and his wife Dr. Chpomotsp. They are expected to depart for London that evening.